Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this rather large telescope uh, next to me on the HDX mount is our new 12-inch uh, RC, or uh, Rishi Kratian uh, astrograph. A very large 12-inch F8 uh, reflector design. It uses two mirrors uh, in the RC design, uh, meant for long exposure deep sky photography. So let's get uh, kind of into the details and I'll show you what it's all about. All right, well, first off, the optical tube design. Um, as you can see, it's not a closed tube. It uses these trusses, similar to our uh, large Dobsonians. They're carbon fiber trusses, keeps it nice and lightweight. Uh, and it's a really interesting design. It's, uh, there's two truss systems on this. Uh, as you can see, there's three of these large plates in the front, the middle, and the back. And you've got two, it, it's divided into two pieces, the front trusses and the back trusses. And this is kind of an interesting design. It was originally meant for the Hale telescope on Mount Palomar, a very large telescope, uh, but it's been incorporated into this smaller design. It keeps it very optically and thermally stable. Uh, as you move the telescope around the night sky, gravity kind of pulls on any telescope in different directions. But these trusses are designed to tension and kind of work against each other. So as um, there's more weight up on top, these things tension this way, these resist the tension and it basically gives you a very stable platform, uh, optically stable, it does not move, doesn't change focus. The carbon fiber helps with thermal stability. Um, and since it's open, it cools down very quickly. So it's a great way to uh, uh, design an astrograph when you're worried about taking longer exposures or lots of exposures and worried that the temperature is gonna be changing or as you move through the sky, gravity kind of pulls on the telescope in different directions. A, a very stably, op optically designed, stable telescope. Uh, next, the mirrors themselves. This is the 12-inch uh, Ritchie Cratian design, which means uh, you don't have a corrector plate up front. You've got two mirrors, the hyperbolic secondary and a hyperbolic primary mirror. And that does all the correction you need to have no field curvature and virtually no coma. So it's a very flat image from center to edge. Uh, works with cameras all the way up to full format, uh, 35 millimeter full format. So no, it's not necessary to have extra correction lenses put on the back of the, of the telescope. Next, the mirror itself, it's a 12 inch F8. That means it's a 2435 millimeter focal length. Uh, great for uh, high magnification, uh, deep sky imaging of smaller objects, uh, globular clusters, uh, smaller galaxies. It's a great high power deep sky astrograph. I mentioned that the optical tube is thermally uh, and optically stable, uh, but that also extends to the mirrors themselves. Both mirrors are made from quartz, which is a very low thermal expansion material. So as the temperature is changing outside, it's not gonna affect the optics nearly as much as it would uh, some other type of substrate. And the last thing I wanted to mention about the optical stability of the optical tube itself, um, on some telescopes like a Schmidt-Cast design, the mirror is focused by, well, the, the, the system is focused by moving the mirror back and forth. On the RC design here, the mirrors are fixed in place, so they're very solidly fixed. Uh, there's no mirror flop or gears that the mirror's riding on. The uh, focuser in the back adjusts the camera, uh, leading you to even more stable images again and no mirror flop. And then the last thing I wanted to mention about the optics before I get into the uh, specific details of some of the mechanics, uh, the mirrors, those quartz mirrors, uh, the reflectivity of the surface is 96%. So it's a nice high brightness, high reflective surface. All right, so let me start showing you some of the um, features of the mechanics of the scope. And my favorite part here is actually the focuser. It's a 3.3 inch diameter linear bearing focuser. So it holds a lot of weight. The linear bearing system uh, is very smooth. Uh, it's a dual speed. It's got this reduction gear. So you've got coarse and a very fine control on the focus here. So critical focus is, uh, is much easier to achieve. Uh, the uh, linear bearing focuser holds up to nine pounds of equipment. So your DSLR, your filter wheel, adaptive optics, whatever you wanted to put on there, uh, you can hold up to nine pounds of equipment and it'll still uh, easily move it up and down with zero backlash. It's a very solid system. There's a very long back focus uh, as well. Right now, I've got two of these extension tubes underneath the focuser. Um, they're both one inch extension rings. There's also a two inch extension ring that comes with it. So you can pretty much find focus with any set of equipment uh, from a diagonal and an eyepiece, if you wanted to throw an eyepiece on here and look through the scope, to any combination of camera, DSLR, CMOS, uh, filter wheels in between. It, it Pretty much everything reaches focus with this system. While we're back here looking at the, uh, the, the back plate of the scope, I wanted to show you something else. The collimation of 
uh, a normal RC sometimes can get a little bit difficult because usually the, the focuser is attached to the primary mirror. So when you adjust the, uh, the primary, you're also adjusting the, the, the focuser itself. This is a little different. The, there's collimation screws back here, this, these three sets around the perimeter. That adjusts the primary mirror, and that's independent of the focuser itself. The focuser has three uh, adjustment screws closer in, right here. So it separates out the two adjustments and makes it easier to get a full optical system alignment. The last thing I want to mention on the back plate here before we move on is the, uh, the fans. Um, there's a set of three fans here to help cool the mirror down uh, quicker. I mean, it, it's already a fairly fast uh, system to cool down because it's an open tube design, but the fans assist in getting it down to ambient temperature uh, all that much faster. The scope comes with a little battery pack. Uh, you put in eight AA batteries, a little 12 volt system, plugs in right here, and then turns the fans on, gets it down to ambient fairly quickly. The scope attaches to your mount using the wide D-series uh, Los Mandy style plate. So on the bottom, you've got the wide plate here, and on top, you also have a similar Los Mandy D-series uh, dovetail plate for attaching any number of accessories. Usually what goes up on top would be a guide scope, um, either with rings and a clamp, um, or you know whatever else you wanted to put on there. It, it, we give you the option to, to put anything up there. The, the, the uh, dovetail plate also comes with two sets of drilled holes so you can attach a um, uh, one of the Orion finder bracket bases so then you could use one of the smaller guide scopes or an extra finder up on top if you wanted to. There's two sets of holes for, uh, for whatever, whatever you wanted to put up there. The scope itself weighs 52 pounds without your camera or finder scopes or whatever else you're going to put onto it. So keep that in mind. This is a very large telescope. Um, I've got it on the HDX mount here, which probably doesn't even feel it because this thing can hold 110 pounds. But when you're uh, building your system up, think about what you're going to have in the, in the rig. How heavy is your camera? How heavy is the filter wheel, the finder scopes, everything else? Add that to the 52 pounds of the telescope. And then if you're trying to decide on a mount, make sure it's got enough overhead to hold that um, as well. Because it, when you're doing long exposure photography, you need it to be very stable, and especially with a very big telescope like this, uh, any little vibration or movement with a, a gust of a breeze is going to uh, fatten up those stars. So make sure it's on a big mount such as our HDX or, or other mount that's capable of holding that much weight. The telescope comes with several accessories, uh, and the most important thing are the caps. Uh, these block the dust from getting in when you're storing it. So you've got a cap for the primary and then a cap that fits over the baffle for the secondary mirror here. So you're going to fully protect the optical system. Uh, you also get the battery pack, which I mentioned, and then the three uh, rings, the, the, the one two-inch extension ring and the two uh, one-inch extension rings to reach focus. All right, well, there you have it. A very large, a very advanced telescope for deep sky astro imaging, the Orion 12-inch Ritchie-Cretien astrograph. Thank you very much. Clear skies.